Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel where sometimes I don't really have a direction to go in when I start out these conversational efforts. Recently I've had several conversational opportunities to talk with people both in person and in my less favored way of communication by text message. Text message, one of the times I discussed text messaging with one of my closest relatives and my closest relative agreed that text messaging is just not sufficient. It's not sufficient, but for whatever reason, that's the way that many of our people have converted to. We've converted to text messaging because that's what's commonly practiced. And that's commonly practiced by, it began with a certain generation. And it's definitely not the way that we would have wanted to communicate, for an example, with our grandparents. And it's certainly not the way that I want to communicate with my parents. Uh, but for whatever reason, it's at least an option in terms of communication when some of our parents don't want to communicate at all. And I only say that from my own perspective because I have a parent who does not want to communicate at all. They'll go so far as to leave the TV on at full volume if I call, if they answer at all. And they'll use that as the excuse to pretend that they can't hear me. several songs about these topics and one of the songs that I referenced at the end of my last video is called Anyway. That particular song says, I try to tell you how I feel and your response to me is unreal. And do you hear me? Anyway. So a lot of people don't hear the things that we're saying with one another anymore. There's only a certain percentage of things that are heard, and I believe it's because most of our communication styles are wrapped up in text communications. And many people can hardly read fast enough to keep up with a lot of information, and so we will selectively pick out the bits of information that we think are relevant. Like, not too long ago, just as an example, we had a circumstance here where one of our fish disappeared from the aquarium. It was nowhere to be found. It wasn't in the pump system. It wasn't buried under some of the decorations. It didn't look like it could be consumed by any of the other small fish that were in there. And it had just up and disappeared. But that disappearance coincided with a circumstance where I spoke with someone who is definitely watching on this particular platform, this video probably, because there are things called monitoring spirits. And the monitoring spirits and familiar spirits, if you don't know, are the ones that, you're, that we are supposed to separate ourselves off from and not share any information with. The thing about it though, is that in my particular case, there are monitoring spirits who are related to the people specifically to whom these videos are really intended. And by that, I'll go so far as to say, I've had a lot of difficulty communicating with my father. In, so, in many of the last videos that I've shared here, I've suggested that either I'm coming across in an abrasive way, in an inconsiderate way, or there's someone who's not able to have a further conversation beyond the agitation and anxiety that they currently experience. So I've tried to do everything, including bringing some music into our lives so that we can understand what it is to, to, to see someone who's creatively attempting to have an opportunity to further the conversation with one another. 
In other cases, basically I'll have other people from the, from the sidelines send things that are almost as if they're there to provoke a conversation that is already been named. Like I had one of the, one of my great friends respond to me saying, I saw something that you shared about your father, something about your father. And this same person who I've regarded really highly, I told to them in the past that my father has done some serious, uh, serious things, including setting fire to his own home. And that situation is something that if I told you in person, as a friend of mine, or even on the phone, or even by text message, that my dad set fire to his house and then almost committed suicide, you probably would remember it. And in fact, many of you who are watching this and staying on the fringe, who are trying to see, well, what's the outcome of this sharing this information publicly? If you're staying on the fringe, you know that this person did indeed set fire to their house. I've linked back to videos that show the house on fire. I've talked about this many times. I've written songs about it to try and process it from my perspective. And all that has led to is basically people either paying attention and being concerned or people calling up and saying, hey, I'm concerned about your dad. And then not really ever hearing what you said was going on what I said was going on with my father. So with all of this in mind and with all of the different energies that are being transferred here, I want to once again, just turn the mirror right back into, well, you can see me very clearly. You can see things coming to order around me. You can see that I'm working extremely diligently on trying to bring you the best version of myself every day. And that's something that my father theoretically would be proud of if he could accept that as a truth. The, the best scenario that I can compare this to, if I were to tell you, this is just like something I saw in a movie, would be the scene in Lord of the Rings where Frodo goes to, um, to show I guess Bilbo Baggins, the, the ring, the ring that he's carrying. And Bilbo, I think that's his name, he, he, the, the older uh, hobbit, Bilbo goes and he sees the ring and he says, let me try that just one more time. I want to wear it just one more time. My precious. And then he gets, he turns into a rage and he turns into a different being and he attacks Frodo because he wants to experience that power that he used to have. Now, now he doesn't have it. The younger version has it. He wants to experience that power and he would hurt this other generation who's carrying that burden just for a taste, for a sampling of that power. And for whatever reason, he doesn't recognize how dangerous it is until he explodes and then, and then shrinks back into himself like, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm so sorry. That's kind of our interaction with one another. All of the different ways that it's been portrayed, whether it's been in a biblical text or in a CGI enhanced movie or in any way possible, have talked about these circumstances. And so whether we want to call them demonic attacks or egocentric uh, traits or whatever, the fact is that I believe in this era, especially with texting as our primary mode of communication, we're able to see more and more that there is a communication breakdown and that we are not putting forth the effort that is required neither to communicate how we are feeling nor to actually hear when someone else tells us what they're going through. Recently, I got to see someone who I, I'm very fond of and who has turned their health around. They were on the borderline of having type two diabetes, mostly because of food choices. And these food choices are just one aspect to keeping ourselves healthy. You know, food is one thing, exercising these bodies that we have, exercising our demons is another thing. Mental, physical, 
spiritual. If we don't have any spiritual in us, well, we might start losing our train of thought because we'll be trying to play to the ego all the time and we might not be able to discern truth from alternate reality. The truth is always going to shed light on the darkness. And that's just all there is to it. I hope this makes sense. I hope that this sounds like sensible information. I hope that you're seeing things take shape around yourself as well as within this realm that you're looking at. And I hope that you understand that we're sharing these energies together. And I hope that you're having a great day. Until next time, thank you so much for listening and for your concerns. I'm going to ask you because I feel like I need it from external sources at this point. If you are in any way associated with prayer circles, please do me the great favor of sharing some prayers for people within my family to be able to communicate better. Even myself, you know, it, it's, not, it's not an exclusive thing where I'm saying, all these people can't do this, I can do it. It's, this is a mutual thing. We're all learning together. And until we understand that we're just basically kind of overlooking some conversational opportunities, we may never get to the point where we can have a conversation prior to what comes next. And what comes next? Well, some of that's up to us and some of that is well out of our control. Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Peace, love, and all that old school stuff.